Hopefully YouTube does not make this hard for me today, but what we're gonna be doing is going over a motocross crash. Now what happened here is that this motocross rider possibly just biffed it on the landing and then hit his head, but this is exactly what a concussion or traumatic brain injury actually looks like. So today we're gonna be going over this and I'm gonna be talking about what's happening, how this is happening. So if this happens to your buddy, you know what to do so that you can take care of them, okay? So let's jump into this and talk about it. Hey buddy, you okay? I'm gonna take your glasses off, all right? You okay? Hey man, hold tight, all right? Hold tight. So I did a little bit of editing, shortened it up just a little bit. So if you want to watch the original video, it is linked in the description. So I want to show a little bit of the lead up going up into this crash. Now, this is what I determined for mechanism of injury. Mechanism of injury is basically the type of setting, the type of scenario that could cause an injury. And it's going to let me know kind of like what the severity of that injury is. So we're going to go forward just a little bit more. And this right here is exactly what I'm talking about. So you're going to get a lot of airtime, a lot of impact type of injuries, and then you're going at a high rate of speed because you're trying to make this. So kudos to this motocross rider for landing and then immediately swerving. So we talk about that in the smart rider system, maintaining your fundamental physical skills. And this is exactly one of them. And on top of that, low traction for tires right on dirt. So just so you guys know, if you have the right tires, right PSI, you did your T clocks, you know how to do your stuff. If you practice, 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 you should be able to do it yourself. So good job on him. We're not going to focus too much on that. So if you see anybody in the road, like after a motorcycle crash, you know, in the lane itself, I want you to pull off to the side. Because remember, at the end of the day, if you get injured on top of this person that's already injured, who's going to take care of them? And then now who's going to take care of you? So always look out for number one, look out for your own safety. If you have to do something to make sure that you're safe, then do it. So park off on the side of the road and only go when it's safe for you to do so. So right now, when I see See something like this this is when you start walking up to the scene this is when you start walking up to everything you're starting to do your whole situation awareness a lot like you're doing when you're out riding you're picking out different hazards target hazards all these different things when you're walking up to somebody that's on the ground like this when you have medical training which i highly recommend it once again part of my smart rider system the r portion is rescuing other riders so roadguardians.org or accidentscene.org is where you want to go you're going to get some really good information on what to do how to do things also check out stop the bleed it's a very good website also so there's a bunch of resources out there that you can utilize to understand what's happening here but let's go ahead and keep going with this so when i see something like this when i see a person on the ground they're on their back this is, means that they're supine they're on their back and you see how his arms are kind of clenched and they're kind of just stuck and then he's doing uh, his head movement is just staying straight up so that to me tells me he's either unconscious or he's not all the way there because based off a of mechanism and kind of what I see here, there was a massive impact to the ground itself, especially if there's no movement, no reaction for when I almost hit him. So when I move up further and further and further, I just saw his leg move, that's good. That's either gonna be his brainstem moving his body like involuntarily, or it's him being somewhat conscious and kind of alert. So that means he has a pulse. That means that he might be breathing, but at least I know from that he has a pulse because your body can't move. Nothing can function without blood flowing through your brain, your muscles, your lungs, all your tissues. Your body can't move. So that's the thing is that I understand that he does have a pulse. So that's good. So right here, when I see that arm, there's going to be a few things. There could be the structural integrity. So you have your musculoskeletal system. So you have your muscles and then your bones and ligaments and tendons and all that stuff too. But then 
you also have your brain and nerves. So if anybody ever gotten like a cramp and it kind of stuck right there, and it's like, you know, your calf or your arm is just kind of stuck or whatever, that's nerve stuff. That is, that is the nerves and that is the musculoskeletal system kind of like acting in a way. So when I see this, this could either be a brain issue where the nervous system is, is stuck like that. You see it in seizure patients. And then also it could be the structural integrity. So it could be the bone broken. It could be a muscle. It could be a ligament torn. It could be something that's st keeping it stuck like that. So either way, I'm going to stick to what's the worst thing here. And the worst thing here could be a brain injury. Now, if it's the musculoskeletal, so like a broken bone or the muscle, that's, that's something that sucks, but it's not going to be the thing that's going to kill me or kill this person. So I'm really focused on the brain here. So when I see this, also you see the neck, how it's really red compared to his abdomen. Now that could just be a tan, that could be that kind of stuff, but it could also be an asphyxiant type thing where you start to get blood pooling in an area because you're being choked to death. So also right there, double check the chin strap, make sure that they're breathing. That is gonna be another concern for me is I'm gonna make sure they're breathing. So when he's asking, you know, hey buddy, hey buddy, and he's like saying, you know, I'm gonna take your glasses off. So that's perfectly fine to do. So when you say, hey buddy, hey buddy, that is gonna judge whether they're conscious or not. If you get no response back, they're either uh, alert, but not verbal. So what that means, if we do the whole AVPU, A -V -P -U, you're gonna learn that in accentscene.org. Uh, basically what's happening there is that if you're fully alert, then you're gonna be able to answer every single question, you know, time, person, place, thing, all these different things. If you're only alert to verbal, so the V part, so if I say, hey buddy, what's up? And you're like, ah, nah, 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 like that, it means you're alert to verbal, but you can't answer my questions. If you don't answer anything and I like poke you, like, you know, do a sternal rub, or if I, you know, shake your arm or do something, and then you respond to that, that means that you're alert to pain, okay? So if you're absolutely completely unconscious, you don't respond to me touching you, calling your name, doing anything, you're completely unconscious. A AVPU, use for unconscious. So right here, when he's going to take the glasses off and he asks, hey, buddy, what's going on? He doesn't get any response. So he's going to take the glasses so he gets a better view. And from there, you can see if he's conscious or breathing. So he's going to keep moving forward. And right there, the blinking of the eyes. Now that, like, once again, that's going to let me know that there is some blood flow. There is some blood flow to the brain, and the brain is somewhat using some of it. So that's really important. Now I would check his breathing. Make sure he's actually breathing, okay? So... Uh, right now, it does look like he's breathing. You see some chest rise and fall, but keep an eye on that. Maybe loosen up the strap, but don't take the helmet off. And the reason why I say that is you don't want to take a helmet off on a person that is breathing because you could possibly hurt their cervical spine. That You got seven vertebrae in your neck, and if you break at least, the, I think, the top four out of the seven, uh, you're paralyzed. So you really don't want to mess with that kind of stuff unless you got some help or some training. So right here, go ahead and loosen the strap maybe, but don't take the helmet off and then leave them right there and get some help, okay? So now when do you take it off? The only time you do to take it off is if they're not breathing and you have to breathe for them and they have a full face helmet. So if they only have like a half helmet, a three quarter helmet, you have full access to the mouth, you have full access to the airway, you can go ahead and breathe for them in that situation. But when they have a full face, you obviously can't breathe for them. And really, you need to be able to breathe as a human being because then you're going to start having brain tissue death after a couple minutes. And then after eight minutes, you're brain dead. So you really have to learn how to breathe for that patient or that person or that friend, whatever you want to call them. So we're going to move forward a little bit. He's saying, you know, hey, buddy, hey, buddy, okay. So he's not responding. He's still in this situation. Once again, it's still dangerous for you as a motorcycle rider. Imagine somebody else coming up over this hill like he just did. Boom running you over now there's two patients and you might be the worst one out of all of them so we're going to move forward a little bit and he's going to get a good look so what i would do is i move off to the side and then get over that crest to take a good look of everything so right here he's he's trying to think what do i do what do i do what do i do what do i do and he's going to set his helmet down and he can't get anybody and then i i fast forward it to this point so now he's got some buddies and they're loading him into the truck now i get the understanding i i, I truly do it's like you know let's not spend money on the on the ambulance, you know, let's kind of see and gauge how everything is. But here's the thing, based off of the mechanism of injury and what we saw him on the ground, that is a very high level concussion. So traumatic brain injuries, what it is, it's, it ranges from everything. You can have the most minor, 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 minor concussion to the having a bullet going through your brain or having a chunk of your head being blown off like you see quite a bit in in the military so that is like a very extreme example of a traumatic brain injury and the very small example is the very small concussion right here what we're seeing in this video is super close to getting a penetrating trauma to the brain it's very severe especially if you're lasting for a very long time 
uh, with with the cognitive decline and then having to repeat questions and then just having no mobility, which we'll see pretty soon. So if you see that, screw the truck, screw all that stuff, call 911, get somebody there that's going to handle this. Because with a brain injury, remember, your brain is the system that controls everything. If it deteriorates and gets worse and worse and worse, your lungs are going to stop working, your heart's going to stop working, um, all your all your intestines, all the vital organs, all everything is going to stop working. And that's not good. And you need to have EMS on scene to handle those situations so that if on the way to the hospital, the heart stops working, we have equipment and training to keep your heart going as long as we possibly can until we can get to the hospital where they're going to put you on a different machine. Same thing with breathing. We could breathe for you with BVMs and a bunch of other equipment, and then they're going to put you on a respirator at the hospital. But if you put somebody in the truck, especially the back of a truck or, or anywhere, and you take them to the hospital and they stop breathing, what are you going to do for that? Do you have the equipment? Do you have the room to do CPR in the back of a car? Do you have all this stuff? That is where I say, you know, risk versus reward. So if you have to spend a little bit of money, you know, on an ambulance, when I say little, I understand it's a lot, but it's what's, what's your health worth? What's your health worth? What's your friend's health worth? Maybe you all can come together and help pay for these bills. I mean, I would love to have a crew that would do that for me, and I would love to be able to do that for my crew, which we pretty much do. So guys, go ahead and join the Discord. We have 3,100 members on the Discord. It's absolutely free. And uh, there's a crew lounge for those of you that are DDFM crew members from YouTube or Patreon. But let's go ahead and keep going with this. And that's what that's one of my biggest things is, is that we need to be very aware of how injured somebody really is. And when I see this right here, this lets me know how severely injured this rider is. If afterwards, after he's becoming conscious or a little more conscious and aware, he has very, very big difficulty even walking. This is bad. This is a very bad brain injury so you notice how his arm is his left arm that was originally like positioned like this where it could have been structural or brain issue you notice how it's around this guy's shoulder right here that's the thing is that it's not structural there was there's no either no broken bones or there might be ligaments or something like that but that whole arm being twisted like that that was a brain caused thing he was basically having like a mini seizure going on with his arm being stuck like that that is a massive impact you notice also he was wearing a helmet so if he wasn't wearing a helmet it could have been a lot worse so when we see this right here how he's stumbling it's just it's 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 rough to see it really is rough to see and as an ems provider and as somebody that's seen this in real life at no point would i be doing this at no point would I be doing this to any patient whatsoever. I've never did a uh, direct carry like this with a patient with a suspected spinal issue or traumatic brain issue. And and I'm not here telling you guys, these guys are doing it wrong. Let's all go crap on them. Let's all like make fun of them. No, they, they just have no clue. That's the whole point of this video is that I want you guys to understand is that when you don't understand what's going on and you just do what you think is best, sometimes it's not what's best for the patient. It's just what's going to solve the problem that we're having so the problem that we're having here is my buddy's laying in the dirt and I got to get him to you know this place to maybe cool down so I'm going to do everything I know personally how to do it so I'm going to throw him in the back of a truck and direct carry him to over here what we should be doing is recognizing the injuries that are associated with this and being like wow this is bad this isn't a scraped knee this isn't maybe a broken arm this is something that is well above what I understand I'm calling 911 just to get him here and here's the thing, guys, in the United States, at least I know in the United States, is that if you call 911 and you have fire police, whoever come here, you can sign a refusal of transportation, basically saying, I don't want to go to the hospital. So you can get all the medical treatment on scene if you want. And then if you feel better as the patient, you know, if the patient feels better, it's like, you know, what, I'd rather go by, you know, personal vehicle or, you know, my buddies take me in the truck. You can sign in that piece of paper and they leave. It just releases liability from, you know, for the whole incident for them. So now you go to the hospital. So and then at any point in time, you can call 911 again if you're halfway to the hospital and you start looking worse and they'll show up and they'll be glad to take you. So that's the whole point of that. So, guys, just call 911, get them rolling, get them going there. And if he feels better, sign that paper and then take him yourself. But if he doesn't get better, 
then they're going to take him. They're going to take care of him. So guys, let's not do this. Let's recognize what's happening with a fallen motorcycle rider and then utilizing the information that we learned from accentscene.org and taking that class because it's going to be super helpful. Uh, code DDFM for $5 off of the online class. Highly recommend it. It's very good information. And that's coming from me as an EMT. This is really good bystander assistance. So guys, if you like these medical analysis videos, let me know in the chat. I can actually go even deeper and tell you exactly Exactly what to do how to do it but we'll go ahead and dive into that in a future video but with that said hope you guys ride safe be safe and take care of yourself and your friends